I'm gaining weight because my metabolism is slowing down. How many times did you hear this sentence? Is it true? Is it true that after 30 years of age, your belly fat, your, your weight gain is due to a lower metabolism? Well, a new paper just published in Science, August 13, 2021, by John Speakman and a team of uh, international team of colleagues, many of them who are collaborators, friends with whom we have published papers, Susan Rosset, uh, Eric Raversin, Susan Roberts, and again, G John Speakman, uh, have published this very, very important paper. Uh, basically, they have measured uh, double labeled water in 6,400 men and women across 29 countries, starting from an age of eight days of eight days, so a newborn, and 95 years. So double labeled water is a very sophisticated and expensive way to measure total energy expenditure in a real lifetime setting, not at rest, but during the day uh, with, again, you know, very sophisticated measurements, people that have to drink these uh, uh, heavy water and uh, collect urine. And based on these measurements, you calculate uh, these uh, energy expenditure. Then in a subset of 2000 people, they also have measured uh, resting metabolic rate by indirect calor calorimetry. There is a way to measure again, at rest, normally during 30 minutes without talking, without moving uh, resting metabolic rate. So it's very different from total energy expenditure during your normal life. So what are the results? Here, a summary, this is a commentary by Ross Anderson uh, with these figures showing what happens. So again, the myth that around 30, you, your metabolism is uh, falling apart, is slowing down, and that, that's why you are getting weight. As you can see here, it's not true. These uh, adjusted body size, adjusted energy expenditure is basically linear, constant, between 20 and 63 years of age. Even in women during pregnancies or postpartum during breastfeeding, there is no in, uh, reduction or increase in uh, uh, adjusted uh, body weight, adjusted energy expenditure. So people that are going to be gaining weight, not because uh, during this, at least from 20 to 60, not because of uh, a slower metabolism, uh, but because their lifestyle is conducive of this weight gain and fat, fat weight gain through a bad diet and I've discussed in several papers and uh, in my new book, uh, The Path to Longevity, what's going on and why people, they gain weight and how bad is the accumulation of uh, abdominal fat, visceral fat for most of the com common chronic diseases we see in our hospitals. But apart from this data, what is interesting is that adjusted energy expenditure increase big ways from when a human being is born until seven months of age. So it's, it, there is an 85% increase. Already by one month of age, uh, the uh, energy expenditure is similar to a uh, young adult. So basically a one month newborn has the same uh, body weight adjust energy expenditure of an adult. It further increased until seven months. And then instead of uh, at this inflection point, there is a decline that is around 3% per year until 20s of age. And then again, as I said before, it's constant, even in pregnant women, until another inflection point around 63s of age, where there is a approximately 1% per year decline in adjusted energy expenditure reaching less uh, a, a reduction of 26% at uh, 90 years of age, okay? In reality, these data, even if they are not probably powered, shows that for resting metabolic rate, 
uh, the inflection point is around 46 years of age. But again, as the author suggests, these data are not as strong as those with the debulable water. They're not so powerful. So here, these data are telling us that there is something that changes around 60 years of age in the tissue organ metabolism. So the, the, the energy expenditure of the major uh, organs like the brain and liver and other uh, important energy consuming organs and tissues is declining, probably because there is a change in the metabolic pathways and in the efficiency of consuming energy that is responsible for this decline and probably has to do something with aging, with the aging of the organism. It's interesting that uh, there is a huge variability at any age in total energy expenditure uh, uh, among uh, men and women. However, I'm not going to go into the detail. I think you know you should read the paper because it has a lot of supplementary data and figures and tables that are really, really interesting to analyze. But I would like to make two points. As I said, because these data are adjusted for body size, uh, 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 these uh, reduction in energy expenditure after 60 years of age is due to, again, as I said, in the change of metabolism of certain organs. In this paper, the authors talk about brain and liver. It's interesting that CR animals that weigh in this experiment, this paper published by Vander is, is a summary of experiment, but anyway, on average, they weigh 40, yeah, 38 percent less. No, 38 percent less is the energy intake. They weigh 42 percent less. They have 30 percent less body fat. However, the brain doesn't shrink. It's exactly the same in their libitum fat mice and in the CR mice. Also, the testicle doesn't change. It's only a six percent less. So two organs are preserved, even during cal severe calorie restriction. In contrast, organs like the heart, liver, kidney, uh, prostate, they, they have a major 30% shrinking. The Richard told me once that spleen and lymph nodes are the organs that are heavily impacted by calorie restriction are those that shrink the most. Here, you know, see 50% reduction in the, in the size of the spleen and the lymph nodes are very, very small in these CR animals. And very, very interesting. That has to do with immune function. And I already discussed about that in other videos. And again, these animals are living long. They are, they are leaner. They have a shrinkage of some organs, but not the brain and testicles. And they live much longer. And interestingly, even if the scuttle muscle in mice is... 40%, uh, the size is 40% lower, these animals are aging, this, the, the sarcopenia is, the age-dependent sarcopenia is delayed, so the slope of decline is much lower in the CR mice, and the function of this muscle is much better. And even in monkeys, there's another paper published by Richard Weindruck on CR monkeys, as you can see here, they, they weight less, but the slope of decline of skeletal muscle mass is much less steep in the CR monkeys compared to the control monkeys. And in another paper, again, from Weindruck, they show that frailty measured with the freed, uh, uh, frailty score is much less in all CR monkeys compared to age and sex matched control monkeys. So there is something different than, uh, there is something going on with how the uh, damage, the molecular damage to tissue and organs are changing the consumption of energy uh, and energy expenditure. And, uh, and uh, we need to understand more how these two factors are interrelated. Nonetheless, the main message, I think, of this paper is that uh, don't blame your metabolism if you gain weight, because from 20 to 60, there is the, the total energy expenditure is constant, even in pregnant women who are carrying a baby. Okay, 
So it's your lifestyle that is responsible for weight gain and the detrimental health consequences linked with uh, with a, 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 an increase in your body weight. As I said in previous uh, videos, uh, if you gain more than five kilos from early adulthood, each five kilos of weight gain is associated with a huge increase in the risk of diabetes, type 2 diabetes, uh, uh, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, uh, uh, some of the most uh, common type of cancers, and uh, liver disease, kidney disease, and there is a, a, a major reduction in healthy aging, in your, in your probability of, uh, of aging healthy. So you should meditate about these findings and uh, take action. As always, thank you for listening.